Hello and welcome to A Homespun House. My name is Molly and thank you so much for taking the time out of your week to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about knitting, maybe some designing, um, yarn dyeing, and just whatever I've been doing here in, in Berlin, Germany, which is where I'm coming to you guys from. So I have been doing a bit of knitting, I feel like, for working and knitting and taking care of kids. I've definitely gotten some fun and enjoyable knitting time in. Um, I just have sock knitting on the brain. All I want to do is knit socks. It's all that I've really been thinking about and enjoying and I just love knitting socks. I can remember when I first started podcasting, I'm pretty sure it was around that time, I was sock knitting obsessed and I'm pretty sure not 100%, but if you go and check out my earlier podcasts, like way, way back, I'm just obsessed with sock knitting. And I think I was knitting a pair of socks a week at that time. So it was definitely something that I was doing a lot of. And I feel like so many people are kind of obsessed with sock knitting right now. I don't know if it's the weather getting warmer that people are just wanting a lot of smaller socks. Now I know it's not getting warmer everywhere. I know that some places in the world it's starting to become autumn, but I know I've heard a lot of people um, just saying that they really want to be knitting socks. So I don't believe you guys have seen these before. I definitely know that if you follow my Instagram you've seen these because I love these socks. I've been having so much fun knitting these socks that um, I've definitely shared them on Instagram. And I knit them, these, I knit this pair in a week, almost, maybe a little. I think I cast them on Friday before Easter on the way to Robert's parents' house. And that's the reason that I cast them on. I cast them on because we were going to Robert's parents' house. I had my patchwork socks on the needle, needles. I'll show you guys those in just a minute. But I have my patchwork socks on the needles, and while those are just complete stockinette, you know, stitch socks, I'm knitting them the same. So they have different yarns in them, and I want them to be the same. I guess I should show these to you guys right now. So I want them to be the same, and they actually have a specific amount of stitches per each yarn and I didn't want to be counting. I just wanted to sit in the car, I wanted to relax, and um, I wanted to knit something stockinette. So, just to talk about these a little bit. I have done the cuff, the heel, and the toe all in my fog colorway on our Dale base. So that's 100% 19 micron um, non-superwash merino. It's so soft and squishy, it's a base that I will never get rid of because I enjoy it so much. I think it would make the most beautiful garments and shawls and while it's not the best yarn for socks because it is just a merino blend um, and I've talked about this before you can use non-superwash wool for socks definitely but a 100% non-superwash merino yarn at that is so soft in its micron count that you're kind of bound to get holes and stuff inside of it. But anyway um, it's perfect for garments and stuff. And I, I don't mind knitting socks with it. They can just be my extra special socks. And most of this yarn is knit with like opals and regias and a couple of hand dyed yarns. I think this one and this one might be the, and this one are the only hand dyed yarns. So there are just three in there. The other ones are, like I said, ah, this one as well. This is an Eden Cottage, I'm pretty sure. So, um, yeah, I didn't want to be sitting and counting. So, the ridiculous thing is, is today I was sitting and just relaxing um, and I wanted to knit on these socks. So, I was seriously positive that I had knit, I don't know, a couple of stripes at least, three or four of the colors, and I kind of, you know, had an idea that I was all the way down to the heel and I pulled out these socks and would you believe it that all that I had on so I'm doing these on my um, Knit Pro Zings a lot of people think that these are signatures 
that they are indeed the zings. All that I had on was the cast on. It wasn't even connected. And I thought, how in the world did I think I was so far along on these? So I finished the cuff. That's what I have done on it. So these um, socks are housed in my Alex Collins bag. I've sh I think I've shown this to you guys on every podcast, but it is such a beautifully made drawstring bag. My heart is hurting a little bit for this because this is one of my favorite bags. Alex takes and puts so much care into her bags. She prints her own fabric and they're just gorgeous drawstring bags. I, I, I have nothing negative to say about these. Um, we were at the director's house of the play that Robert is in right now, and Ada D. Ruby and I were spending some time with his wife, who is, she's really, really nice and sweet. And we were playing at the park, which is across the street from their house. And Ada D. and I, I was pushing Ada D. on the swing, and she was um, pushing Ruby around in the stroller. And Ruby was getting a little bit cranky, so she was kind of running with her, and Ruby was squealing and was having the time of her life. Well, I'm guessing that in that time, my bag fell in the dirt. And she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. I know I've never, ever dropped this bag. I have always been extremely careful with all of my project bags. This one's white, so it's, you know, like a creamy color. So there's dirt on it right here. Oh, let's open it up. There's a little spot right here. And then here it's a little bit dirty. So I don't really know what to do. I don't really know how to treat a self-printed bag. Like I am a little bit nervous that I'm going to ruin it. I think that I will just try and wash it with a little bit of water. Nothing can go wrong with that. With a little bit of water and soap it will at least make it so it's not as You know, so you don't see it as much, but I'm so sad. When I saw it, I thought, why didn't she say something? Like, she had to have seen it fall on the floor, but I don't know. So that stinks. Hopefully I can get those stains out of there. I'm quite positive it's just dirt. It looks slightly mossy. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know, because I would love... Um, get this bag back in it's pretty pristine order um, but I love that I don't know if you guys have noticed but this is my Collins colorway this is restocked in the shop and this was actually kind of this was named after Alex Collins because I kept looking at this bag and I kept thinking I just need a speckled yarn that's you know a natural base with fun black speckles that you can add as a texture so the Collins colorway inspired by Alex is um, back in the shop. So back onto these socks. Um, is this one shorter? Oh my goodness it is. It's got to be shorter. Look at that. That is a big difference and the, the funny thing is I just gave this yarn to Tina. <laughs> There was leftovers and she kept looking at it and I was like, just take it, you can have it. And she was like, are you sure? Yeah, no problem, that's totally fine. Um, so Robert is actually over at their house right now watching soccer with, with Mitty. And the girls are with him. I'm gonna have to write him to tell him if I can have that back. Oh no, that's, I feel so mean. Um, I'll send Tina, or I'll send Tina a picture and then say, I need the rest of that yarn. Um, that is a joke. I mean, it is really, it's got to be an inch, an inch shorter. Oh, I was so happy to be done with these. I mean, I don't have a problem ripping it out and reworking on it, but finishing a pair of socks is such uh, like a, like a let go feeling. It's just, it feels really nice. I'm sure you guys know. It's really nice because socks are so fulfilling to knit I think and then I think for me anyway I really love knitting them um, just 
being inspired by new yarns to cast new yarns on to finish socks is wonderful. So these were cast on the Friday before we went to Robert's parents' house. I got quite a bit of knitting on them there even, which was really nice. Um, we had a really nice time there, to be honest. Uh, it can be quite stressful. Um, we're very different people, let's just say that. So it can be quite stressful from time to time going there. We were there for four days. and um, But it was nice. We went to the zoo. Adod um, went to an Easter celebration with a bonfire and music and really fun sweets and treats. And um, yeah, it was really great. So we spent a bit of time outside. It was sunny some of the time. Um, bike riding. I got pictures of my alpine shawl taken there. That will be released this week, so I'm so excited about that. And I got some knitting done on my socks, which was brilliant. It's the only project I took with me, but I thought, you're going to be busy. I cast on a brand new pair of socks. I didn't finish them um, while I was there because I'd have to be sitting a lot of the time knitting while I was there, and that definitely didn't happen. I got the whole way there, and then maybe one, one and a half hours each day probably not even an hour each day and then the way home to knit on them so um, I've picked them up a little bit this week uh, but I feel like the majority of the knitting definitely got done on the way there and on the way home so very happy those are almost finished I thought they were finished the ends are not woven in Meredith Natasha Natasha you can laugh Meredith you can understand <laughs> um, I know Meredith told me that Natasha laughs at her because she doesn't weave the ends in on her socks, but it's hard. It is hard. I don't know how it happens, but I, I never weave the ends in in my socks. I mean, I do, obviously, because I wear my socks, but there was this one evening that it was so cold and Inody and Ruby were asleep and I wanted to go and get a pair of my socks from the bedroom and I didn't want to wake up Ruby. Inody sleeps so hard. I didn't want to wake up Ruby, and so I couldn't go in and get a pair of hand knit socks. And I came into my studio and I grabbed, you know, the, the newly finished sock that I've knit. I think I've knit five pair of socks and including these ones. Not including the patchwork socks. I think that would be six. And the baby socks that I knit these ones from the from my pattern which is Molly Weasley's family socks it was released last Wednesday such amazing feedback you guys are so awesome for casting these on um, hashtagging it um, Mrs. Weasley's family socks on Instagram there aren't that many hashtagged yet but if you're knitting them totally please hashtag it it's the easiest way for me to see it otherwise I'm going to miss your your project or a homespun house you can hashtag it um, but I've loved seeing the project and the fun stuff you guys have cast on it. Knitting Mummy, you guys need to check out her Instagram. She knit the coolest pair of these socks. I know Danny from Little Bobbins has knit some really cool ones. Tons of you. Awesome. I love, love seeing them. So anyway, I came in to grab some socks. Every single pair, the ends were not woven in. I think what I have to do is always keep um, a darning needle in my knitting bags because for example, these ones, I finished them while we were outside with Tina and Michi and Emma this morning and I wasn't able to sew in the ends. I was like, Tina, do you have a darning needle with you? I don't have one because I know myself and I knew that I wouldn't get them, the ends woven in. <laughs> so that really stinks. I have these socks housed in my brand new Lowland Originals patchwork bag. I have my little um, pretzel or pretzel progress keeper here that I used the whole time I was knitting my socks. Let's see what all I have in my bag. I have my Alex Collins um, lavender sachet the band for the yarn. I have the sweet little note that Renee gave me with the bag. And I have a necklace that she made for Ruby. I have the bag for a necklace that she made for Adodi. I wish I had the necklace to show you, but Adodi loves it. 
Ado D really likes pretty jewelry. Um, she really appreciate, appreciates it, and she's very allergic to jewelry, so it has to be, you know, she's very allergic to silver and stuff. And the one that Renee made is really nice. It doesn't give her a rash or anything. So this one's for Ruby when she gets older. That was really nice. I have some chocolate wrappers because I am a chocolate addict. And then I have this beautiful DPN patchwork cozy that she makes. So I want to talk about these because Renee makes a lot of patchwork drawstring bags. Um, I'm not sure if she makes um, zipped bags. I think she makes some, but I definitely know that she makes mostly drawstring bags. And her patchwork bags are phenomenal. I, again, I don't have anything bad to say about them. I love the cord that she uses in hers. Um, she uses different colors. This one has pink. I know I've seen cream on some of them. And then the inside is this beautiful vintage fabric. And she uses quite a stiff interfacing. It definitely reminds me it's very comparable to like a freckled whimsy. I know a lot of you guys have used and have freckled whimsy bags, so this is one that I would say, like I said, is quite comparable in the stiffness of it. Um, but it's so nice. And her prices, I honestly think are extremely low. They are very, for a bag like this, and if you guys have ever done patchwork before, if you've ever made a bag before, you know how much work can go into it. And to make a lined, seamless, patchwork drawstring bag takes a lot of time. And I believe that her bags are 27, 30 euro. I think they're 27, but I'm going to say 30 just to be safe. And I think that is such a steal for a patchwork bag. So she um, has these in her shop quite often, patchwork bags and different fabrics, different colors. This one's definitely pink. I love pink, um, but if you're into something else, you can have a look for something else. I couldn't recommend it more. Um, I don't know a lot of bag makers who are making this high quality uh, patchwork bags. So um, it's a Lowland Originals patchwork bag. And I love it. I really, really love it. So. This will definitely be, come, one of my bags that is always in use as long as I have, you know, enough projects. It's kind of something that I've been noticing is I have be been becoming more of a person. I said this last podcast as well, um, who is really focusing on two or three projects. And I notice that I don't have really any projects on the needles right now. I have those two pair of socks. I have a sweater that I'm going to show you right now and then I have um, my foraging mittens on the needles. So the next thing that I have um, is in my gorgeous, 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 gorgeous the Fawn Knits project bag. I've showed you guys this time and time again. You're gonna get sick of it. <laughs> or probably not because it's absolutely beautiful. Her wool felt bags. So in here I have a new sweater. Um, I've been wanting to knit a pullover for a really, really long time. And I have had Hannah Fedig's, um, I think it's called the Modern Fair Isle sweater, the Modern Fair Isle pullover. Um, so let me show you what it looks like. I think it's really a beautiful pullover. So here's the picture. I hope you can see it. And it calls for worsted weight yarn. And I thought, I really love, again, my Dale DK base. I want to knit something in the barley colorway because I just adore this um, shade of mustard green. It's, again, I think the most jewel toned that a yellow can get. And I, I just really like it. I like to wear this color. It's kind of the same color as my campsite shawl that I made a while ago. And it's my favorite shade of yellow. And it's fun to knit with. I love the base, so I thought, why not? 
I have some Ooh La La in DK here that I wanted to use for the, the Fair Isle. So I thought that would just be a really, really fun pop. So I cast it on and the Willard Fair Isle pullover calls for a tubular cast on for the neck. So this is the neck right here. It's kind of scrunched up on my needles. I am not a person who likes to have a really, really large needle. I think Jilly talked about this from the Knitting Broomsticks podcast. Um, I just don't like to have a lot of, of needle. Even if it's like a massive shawl or something like that, I like, I like there to be quite a bit of stitches on the needle. I don't like to have a lot of wiggle room. So this uses a tubular cast on. It's the first time I've ever done a tubular cast on. Um, I can remember hearing somebody talk about a tubular cast on and they talked about kind of how difficult it was and um, that they just really did not enjoy it. So I was a little bit, I thought, okay, should I just do my long tail cast on? Um, but I've also heard really good things about the tubular cast on, that it looks so pristine and beautiful and professional and it just gives it a really beautiful finish. And so I thought, I'm just going to try it. So I looked up a YouTube video, video because I, as I said, I've never ever done it before. So um, I looked one up, and in my mind, for those of you who are nervous or scared to do a tubular cast on, it is definitely a technique that I would say do not shy away from. Don't be scared, do it. It is, for me personally, I thought it was extremely simple. Um, I don't mean anything against people who have had a hard time doing it. You know, different people learn things differently and find different things challenging. But for me, it was, it was extremely simple. It takes a little bit longer. I think, you know, the initial setup is maybe four rows until you can get, you know, into the normal knitting groove. But I love it. It's a really cat. It's a really stretchy cast on, and it gives it just a beautiful rounded finish. It's kind of basically the same as brioche knitting. I thought it really reminded me of that. So I did the neck and I started to do, I started to do the fair isle of this pattern. And I thought, you know what? I love pine trees. I should do a pine tree um, fair isle instead of this and just keep the pattern the same and you know, crunch in the numbers and make my pine tree so that they're fitting the number of stitches that I need. So I did that and I got four rows into the pine trees. So that, this is kind of how far I am into my pullover. And when I'm on the fifth round, I realize that in the first row of pine trees, I made a mistake right here. So there's a pine tree and then there's like a little space. So there's a pine tree, a space, a pine tree, a space. And I have two spaces between two pine trees. So I've realized that in all honesty, I don't even really enjoy fair isle knitting. Fair, fair isle knitting is um, two colors. It's just two colors in one row. That's what classifies it as fair isles. There can fair isle. There can be no more than two colors in one row. You can have a sweater with, you know, 50 different colors and have it be fair isle, but each row can just contain two colors. I think I would enjoy fair isle knitting if there were only three different colors or three different stitches in between each color. But when you have to connect the floats and make sure the floats aren't too long, I just don't find that enjoyable. Now I really, really like the the look of it. I like the finished result, but I feel like right now I am not at all into product knitting. That's not at all the the sort of knitter that I am in this moment. There are definitely times in my you know knitting life that I have really knit for the product, but I feel like where I am right now in my life, I'm. I'm really busy. I'm doing a lot of things, and knitting is kind of where I find my seren where I find my serenity. It's where I really just relax and really take that time to myself to enjoy and be in the moment of what I'm doing. And 
I've noticed that with the fair isle of this, while there aren't that many stitches in between, I think at the most there are seven, I still have to connect it in the back and I'm just not enjoying it. You know, I started to do the, the pine trees and I thought, I really, I really want to keep working on this. I really want that pullover with the pine trees. Maybe I'll just do one row each evening. You know, it's, I think it was 13 rows, 12 or 13 rows, and I thought, in a week and a half, it'll be done, and then I can just do the relax knitting. Then I came to that, you know, bump in the road of the mistake at the beginning of my fair aisle. I know it's only four rows back, but for me now, it's just kind of not worth it. I don't have all the time in the world to knit, and I want the time that I have in this world to knit to be complete relaxation, peaceful, enjoyable, and um, I've decided that I'm going to rip this out and I am going to knit the flax, um, or not the flax pullover, that's a tin can knits pattern. I'm going to just knit something like the flax pullover. I think I, think I will just design this one myself. Um, I'm just going to knit either a completely plain stockinette stitch, top down, raglan style pullover, and um, yeah, that's that's just what I think I'll wear a lot. I think I'll really enjoy doing it. I'm not, I don't think I'll do any color work, um, although I really like the way these colors play together. I think they look really pretty. I just it's not in the cards for me right now and I don't really like the fact that or the raglan or that the the pullover when you have that fair aisle there's just that one big section there's no shaping in it it's just you know quickly increased and then you do the um, the fair aisle now I think that the the pullover by Hannah Fedig is gorgeous I think it's really really pretty I would love to have this piece you know, in my life as a garment, but right now it's just, it's not in the cards for me to knit it. I, I haven't been enjoying it right now, and I hate to admit that. It's a piece that I dreamed about having, but I need to be realistic and, you know, just say to myself, you have to knit something that, that you love and something that you enjoy and something that I can just pick up and knit and you know, go with it and not have to think about it too much and just be able to feel the yarn because I love this yarn so much that just the joy of having it in my fingers, even if I'm knitting something so simple as a stockinette, you know, almost no shaping um, pullover is the perfect thing for me and I think that it sounds just absolutely wonderful. So. Um, I think that's what, what's going to happen with this, and I thought about ripping it out today, um, but I think I'll do it tonight. I think I'll do it tonight, and um, I'm going to do the cast on again as the, um, why can't I think of what it's called now? I was just talking about it forever. Um, the same cast on that I did for this. You guys are screaming it at me. Scream louder! tubular cast on. I can see that that will be a cast on that I use for many things. When I think for hats, I even thought about using it for a sock, but I don't really have any problem with stretchiness in my sock. But I think for hats um, and sweaters, pullovers, cardigans, things like that, I can definitely see using the tubular cast on for because a hat, you really see it and it's just it is so pristine and polished and gorgeous. So I'm really excited about that sweater. I'm really, really, really excited about that sweater. Um, I just really adore wearing dresses. Like today I have a dress, a long sleeve dress on, um, and then this Fair Isle pullover on top of it. I have some black tights, and I, that's what I wear a lot of the time. I know that with the summer coming, that obviously won't be something that I'm able to wear, but in the spring, fall, winter, it's kind of sweaters over dresses are staple pieces for me. So I think a simple um, 
mustard colored pullover will be perfect. And then I have some of the Dale Base in our Erin Weight. And I really, I have no idea what color I want to dye it yet. Um, I think it would be really, really fun to do it in uh, more of a variegated colorway. What, what I don't know. I don't think it would be something so crazy. I have a new colorway called um, Let's Be Friends. And I could see that being a really, really cool colorway. Um, so when I was talking about socks, I wanted to talk about something else. I would love, I know I said I wouldn't do any knit-alongs, but I would really, really love, um, I know as I'm saying this, I'm kind of kicking myself in the booty. I'm thinking, let's see what you guys think about doing a springtime Stellina knit-along. And this would go from, you know, the 1st of April, which is already passed, until June 1st. And I think it would just be fun to knit on all of our Stellina yarns because... We know that I'm slowly growing an obsession for knitting with Stellina yarns, and I feel like this Snowmaker's yarn, I've never knit with Snowmaker's yarn before. This is the Hobbit colorway. I got this from my amazing friends, Marianne and Anna, when they came to my uh, meetup that we had in Madison, Wisconsin. They gifted me this gorgeous yarn. I've been wondering what it's going to be, and I think this will be the next pair of socks that I cast on. So Hobbit colorway, awesome. I love... The Hobbit, I love Lord of the Rings. I think this would be so much fun to knit. Um, and I really like the colors. So what do you guys think about a springtime Stellino knit along for two months? You can knit anything you want. It can be as small as you want. It can be as big as you want. Just really enjoying knitting with that Stellina yarn because it is awesome. So this feels like, what is it? It is a 75-20 and then five, superwash marine, merino, nylon, and sparkle. This feels a little bit more hardy. Like it almost feels like a BFL um, Stellina base, which I've never heard of before, but it says it's merino. But it feels like it will make some pretty sturdy socks. Um, and speaking of Stellina, I have been crazily dying on my Stellina yarn. I am obsessed. I love it. It's so much fun. So I dyed up this colorway. This would be a striping colorway called the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And this is greens with little pops of browns and different shades of green. And then it has purples, reds, blues, um, a lot of fun brown, different colorways in here. So there's that one. Oh, feels like my earring just fell out. That's all right. Um, so then I dyed You Cook, All Sing. A lot of my colorways lately are completely Anodie inspired. I, um, I don't know. They've, they're just inspired by Anodie, a lot of them. So I'm always cooking. Anodie is always singing her heart out while I'm cooking dinner. And this is Anodie's favorite colorway of mine right now. She loves this minty green color and she said this one's her favorite. She wants a shawl out of it for next autumn. So that's You Cook All Sing. This is Skinny Dipping. Also on the sparkle base. I have Pinky Promise. Peter D loves Pinky Promises. <laughs> we connect our pinkies and then Kiss our thumbs. Um, oh, there's some. Let me grab some more. So then I have um, this is Let's Just Be Friends. Let me grab it right here. This is on my Jeunesse base, which is the name that I decided to give my singles base. So, um, this is the one that I said I think would make a really pretty pullover. It's kind of purples, pinks, lavenders, reds, brown. It's really pretty. So, I decided to call this base Jeunesse because Jeunesse is actually my maiden name. So, the name that I had before I was married. And I just thought that that fits perfectly with singles. You know, I thought it was just kind of funny. So, 
well, all of my names are inspired by family names. All of them are actually from, you know, my grandma Sue and her family. But I thought, we need something from me. So Jeunesse would just be perfect. So my singles base is Jeunesse. When you see the name Jeunesse in the shop, uh, you'll know it's the single yarn. So this one's Let's Just Be Friends. And then um, Danny from Little Bobbins helped me with this name. This is Teenage Kicks. This is a colorway that Robert, he had been telling me forever that I need a speckled black, green with some neon greens, and there's a lot of blue in here. It must just be kind of more so on the inside, but like a blue, and then um, it's just, it's really pretty. It's really cool. So there's Teenage Kicks, and then we have Let's Hold Hands. I adore this colorway. Um, I think this is maybe one of my favorites. Of, I think this is my favorite of the new colorways. So this one, I'm trying to figure out what shawl to knit this into. Because um, I just love singles and shawls. There are two shawls that I want to knit so badly. One is the Cosmic Dandy shawl, which I think this would go gorgeous for. Um, I think you need three different colors. Um, Julie Knits in Paris, that's her Instagram name. I cannot, I'm so sorry, think of, well her name must be Julie, Julie something. Julia, is she French? Hmm. I don't know if she's French or American. But, that's, let's hold hands. And then this one is Secret Handshake. I like that one too. I, I was really tempted to knit this one as a pair of socks. Also on Stelina. And yeah, so those are lots of new colorways. I am really, uh, really, really, really excited about them. Um, there are two podcasts that I've been watching lately that I really love. I know a lot of people have talked about the Grocery Girls, but... I really like them a lot. <laughs> they have me laughing. I think that they're funny. They seem like really, really nice people. They are so different. Um, Jody and Tracy. They're sisters and they're extremely different. Their personalities are. And that's what I really like. I like that they have such different opinions. They really respect each other though. They're so nice to each other. So kind. Um, and I think the things that they knit are beautiful. They really do a nice mix of tonals, variegated, and speckled yarns together. Um, they just do a beautiful job. And um, Jody, of course, from Miss, Mrs. Brown's Bags, makes gorgeous project bags. So um, I've never had one in my hands, so I don't really know the quality. But from what I've everything that I've seen and everything that I've heard, her bags m must be. Uh, really really nice quality as well so and the fabric she uses are really cool she's recently started printing her own fabric um, with knitted swatches which I think is so much fun really really cool and she does some really fun metallic bags as well so I love Brooklyn Knit Folk that's with Jacqueline she is so different I feel like um, what does that mean I feel like all of the podcasters are actually quite different but She's a lot more um, industrial, I kind of feel like. She um, she works on a lot of different knitting projects, I feel like, than a lot of other podcasters. She uses a lot of different yarns. She, um, I, I love every topic that she has to talk about. I feel like I'm always really interested in what she has to say and I'm nodding my head a lot when I'm watching her. Um, she's just really interesting. I feel like I could be really good friends with her. She seems like a very down-to-earth real person and um, I know not everybody likes, you know, funny humorous podcasts. Some people can't stand to watch those and I've heard people say I can't watch, you know, those podcasts where people are just too silly. I have to watch something that's a bit more real and I definitely say um, that Jacqueline's podcast is just that. So um, 
she's just so wonderful. I really, really love that podcast. And I've been talking, I've been watching it for quite a while, I think almost from the beginning. And I don't know why I haven't mentioned it. I've just forgotten. So definitely Grocery Girls, Brooklyn Knit Folk, go and check those out. If you want to listen to an audio podcast, um, Mrs. Shu, who used to be um, in a snit, she started her own um, audio podcast. It's quite short. I think it's usually about 10 to 15 minutes. It's called Cultivate and Create. And she has something I want, something I need, something to look for or something to, something to look for and something to read. I can't remember what the third one is, but I really love it. For me, it's really nice um, if I get up in the morning before everyone. If that happens, it's usually only 10, 15 minutes. So it's the perfect time to listen to this podcast or after the girls go to bed because Robert and I, I bring Ruby to bed and Robert brings Adod to bed and Ruby usually falls asleep, you know, 10, 15 minutes before Adod and um, it's the perfect time to put that on and I love, I love, I really love listening to Sarah. It's, it's such a different sort of podcast where she talks about knitting and she talks about, you know, different books and um, just things she's been lusting after and it's to the point, but it's also engaging at the same time. So I really definitely enjoy that one. Um, yeah. So we had a really, really nice weekend this past weekend. Uh, we've seen a lot of Emma. She's been at her house the last four days in a row. And um, she spent the night last night. So that went really, really well. The girls had so much fun. They did a lot of crafts. Um, they watched a, a movie, um, we had some yummy dinner, we had wraps with um, different beans and peppers and onions and one of Elodie's favorite foods, which, um, among many foods actually. Elodie is not so picky at all, which is really, really nice. Um, and yeah, it's just been really, really great. Ruby has a doctor's appointment this week. She gets her um, a vaccine, so that's always not so much fun. Um, the vaccine always goes over okay, but both of my girls tend to get fevers after vaccines, so that's not something I look forward to. Um, but yeah, so we've had a really great week. I look forward to dying this week. I'm so excited. All of my um, January through March clubs are finished with. That was Harry Potter and the Speckled Sock Club. So now the next three months, uh, I will be having Harry Potter again, and then we'll be starting our Jane Austen Club. So in the middle of this month, the Jane Austen Club yarns will go out, and then at the end, the Harry Potter yarn clubs will go out. And I cannot wait. Tomorrow, I am dying all of the Jane Austen yarn clubs. I already know exactly what it's going to be. I know what it's going to be called. I love it. I would love, I'm like so tempted to give you guys a teaser to be like, it's after this book. <laughs> but I can't. I know you guys would shoot me. I know you would hate that. Um, but I want to so bad because I just love it. So anyway, I won't. I will spare you guys. I will be a good um, club host and not give anything away. Um... But I'm so excited. I am so excited for these two clubs. It will be so much fun. I'm already thinking about future clubs. If you guys have future clubs that you would love to see, let me know. Maybe I can work something up. Anyway, you guys have a fantastic two weeks ahead, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.